Income elasticity is a very important concept in economics, along with other kinds of um, elasticity. So in general, the elasticity concept tells us how much one thing responds, one variable responds, when another changes. So in price elasticity of demand, it was how much the quantity purchase changed when the price went up or down. So um, in income elasticity, the concept refers to how much the quantity demanded will change when incomes go up. So a good question to ask is, well, how, how does people spending change? And I think a great way to sort of highlight how much people's incomes change and how much that would change their life is to have a look at this scene in a movie called The Time Tap Traveler's Life, Wife, where um, Claire... Well, let's see. Henry, what are you doing? You can't be in here. Yeah, we have to watch. Those are going to save you. We have to watch. We're not jackpot. Let's see. What did you do? Our first winning five number is... 17. 17. So there you see Henry comes back to, from the future and predicts what the future holds. Something that economists like to do as well. But we're not quite as good as that. So the, the real question is how does Claire's spending change? What does she spend more on? What does she spend less on? And what does she spend the same amount on when she wins $5 million? And the actual elasticity concept for income elasticity um, says, well, how how is her income going to respond, or how is the quantity she purchased going to respond to changes in income? Um, and it depends on the type of good. Some goods are normal goods, and that is, uh, you buy more, the quantity demanded rises as income rises. And uh, vice versa, if you get poorer, you buy less of these goods. Um, another kind of good is a luxury good, which is a normal good, but a luxury good in economics is defined as one that you actually spend a greater proportion of your income on when you get more wealthy, when your income increases. So it's one that if your income goes up by say 20%, you actually start, you spend 30% more on it or 40% more. So it's a special class of normal good and then of course there is an inferior good where the quantity demanded falls as income rises. And, and vice versa. So question is clear in that movie, Time Taylor's Wife, great movie, what kinds of things would she stop buying? What kind of things would you start buying? And how does this particular mathematical measurement help us? So a positive sign when we calculate income elasticity denotes that it is a normal good, one that we spend more on. A positive sign greater than one tells us that it is a luxury good. And a negative sign denotes it's an inferior good, that we actually spend less on it. So there may be things that Claire spends less on, like old cars, old broken down cars, and goods that she spends more on. But um, you'll of course have to watch the movie to find out what she actually does spend her money on. And here is the formula and it's uh, Y-E-D, sometimes you'll see it with an E. Uh, we use Y in, um, for, for income, and it, this is the simple formula, the more complex formulas, but it's the percentage change of quantity demanded over the percentage change in income. And it's a pretty easy calculation to do if you're given the percentage changes. So here's an example. Um, income, income elasticity of minus 0.6 
Now, minus 0.6 means that it's a, an inferior good and a rise of income on, of 3% will lead to quantity purchased falling by 1.8%. So this might be budget brand baked beans or, or something like that. But it doesn't have to be that. Sometimes what's perceived as a luxury good by some people actually is an inferior good. And there'd be places where if people's income went up, they may buy, very well buy more baked beans. Uh, another one, um, here's a positive sign of 0.4, so this is a normal good. I've said in there it's inelastic because any number between 1 and 4 is inelastic. In other words, it's increasing but not by much. So a rise of incomes of 3% would lead to quantity demanded rising by 1.2. Uh, and 1.6 positive, it's a normal luxury good. Now you don't have to use the term normal luxury good, but it is a normal luxury good. And an income increase of 3% would lead to quantity demanded rising by 4.8. Okay, so these. And then minus 2.1 is an inferior good, so a rise in incomes of 3% would lead to people buying 6.3% less of the good. So you need to have some practice doing these um, activities, and you'll find um, this kind of exercise in most workbooks. Boom and recession is really important as well, because if you don't know the elasticities of goods, uh, then you can't really make decisions if you're in business about what you produce. If you produce luxury boats and you're in the middle of a recession, your sales will collapse. If perhaps you produce fishing boats instead, your sales may remain steady in a recession as people uh, try to fish themselves out of trouble. Or it may be that you um, find that in a recession, that you, you, if you're selling like uh, military boats, um, then you won't have such sales losses. If you're selling food, the same sort of thing. If you're selling staples in a, in a recession, you're more likely to do well than if you're selling luxury foods, like caviars and those sorts of things. So if you see there, you've got the um, recession and recovery cycle, or the business cycles, it's sometimes called, and you'll see that that's actually uh, what you have at the peaks, uh, luxuries sell very, very well and people often pay exorbitantly high prices for them and then as the economy peters out and, and dives then um, the luxury businesses also tend to fall by the wayside and um, businesses that sell necessities or normal goods tend to do much better. Okay, so um, I suppose the question is, really does, how does spending change how does um, Claire's spending change in particular? And if you are really interested in that, of course, you're going to have to watch this movie.